Well, ladies, we're about to get into session one of our day today. We have a very, very special guest coming right up who actually specializes in stress and anger management. She's actually been a pastor as well for 38 years, so she won't only give you the, the degrees and the theory, but she'll also give you the spiritual side of it. So can we give a big round of applause to Charmaine Holland as she takes the stage? Come on, ladies, you can do better than that. Amen. Good morning, ladies, and one or two gents. I'm just deciding if I can see. Um, okay, I think I'll be good here. Yeah, it, uh, this is a bit high. You know, you're supposed to accommodate for all sizes. <laughs> ladies, it is absolutely amazing to be here today. And I just want to say, you know, as I drove out of our estate this morning, I looked up into the sky, and then I saw this beautiful rainbow. And as I traveled towards Durban, I saw a double rainbow. And so I want to tell you today, God is into double portion of blessings for you today. Amen. That might be much better. So I want to bless somebody with this T-shirt, and while we were praising the Lord, that lady in the, that's this, this lady right here, yes, you, yes, you, I want to bless you with this. Can I just throw it? I'm not a very good thrower, so sorry. <laughs> and so let's do a double blessing here this morning, and let's have a look right here, yes, that lady waving at me, yes, you, yes, come. You know what? When you want blessings, you must act. And the minute you act, God does something. Amen. Ladies, it's really lovely to be here today. And I would like you, just before I start, to turn around to somebody and say, you are looking gorgeous. And that's not a joke. We are looking gorgeous today. Coming up three years, many of us have gone through storms and had devastating stories to tell. And right now, in the midst of this fun and this wonderful atmosphere, I just want to acknowledge each and every person that has gone through loss, devastation, maybe losing people, pain, suffering. We want to just acknowledge you today because I want you to know that the Lord knows the pain that you've been through. And my observation is that mental and emotional health has actually been an underlying threat for some time. And I think COVID just brought it to the surface. And so I'm going to give you tips because I'm a very practical person and I believe if we have tips we can go and do it. But I do want to say, because he lives, we can change our future. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Tell the lady next to you, I can change my future. And I want to tell you, God is not short of miracles today. He has miracles for us. So one thing, I love it, it's called living, oh no, mine's called uh, firing on all cylinders, but there was up there just now, love your life. And that's what it's all about today. And I want to say that every single person here, to my knowledge, is living. Can you just check the person next to you is living? Because if they're not, we're going to have a problem. But I do want to say that not everybody is loving living, or loving their life, and that's what we want to do. Hopefully today, with all of us that have got some tips and some help for you today, that we're going to actually be working towards loving our life, because God wants us to love our lives. Ladies, Jesus did not die on the cross for us just to have life. He wants us to have life abundantly. And he doesn't want us just to live and survive. He wants us to live and love our lives. And he wants us to live to the fullest capacity 
that we can, because that's the God that you and I serve. Hence my title, Firing on All Cylinders. Tell the lady next to you, I'm going to be firing on all cylinders. So being a blonde, I don't know anything about cylinders, but Google does. <laughs> don't we just love Google? It knows everything. Well, not everything, but you know. It says here, the expression of firing on all cylinders was first used in the United States in the early 1900s and refers to a function of the internal combustion engine. I don't understand what that's all about, but I'm just telling you for those that do. An internal combustion engine works by firing cylinders. If one or more cylinder misfires, the engine will not work efficiently or to its full capacity. Now, ladies, you know what? We're not cars, but we are God's vehicles. And we need to have this vehicle functioning to bring glory and honor to the King of Kings, because that's what it's all about. Our mental and emotional health is as important as our spiritual and physical because they all work together. And if one is misfiring, it impacts the other. So ladies, if you're not firing on all cylinders, then what we're doing is putting ourselves at risk at not living a full potential for God. And I want to tell you today that's not God's plan. He wants us to live at our full potential I want to stop at John 10.10, 10, and this is what it says. I have to read the whole thing, but I'm not going to focus on this, all of it. It says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I don't want to focus on that. I want to go to the exciting part. It says, I came so that you would have life indeed, so that you could live life to the fullest. Everybody say fullest. Tell the lady next to you fullest. I'm going to live to the fullest. Tell them next to you, please. It's important that you start believing that you can have the greatest life and you can function on all cylinders this morning. Um, Ladies, I just want to say this. It's very important when I say we should be functioning on all cylinders. That is not saying that you need to be perfect, okay? Because one of the things that we often do as Christians is we really want to try and be perfect. God's not looking for perfection. And he's also not going to give you a problem-free life. Everybody's very quiet. But he does give us his word because he knew that along this journey, we're going to need the word to motivate and encourage us. And that's why I love this scripture. In John 16, verse 33, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. When you've got peace, we can function at the best. It says, in this world, you will have trouble. Everybody say trouble. 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 But, it says, I love it when God says, but, or suddenly, and he says, but, take heart, I have overcome the world. Even in the midst of your troubles, ladies, I want you to know that we can prepare to fire on all cylinders. So, let's get to the questions. I want to ask you five questions, and we're going to see which cylinders you're not firing on, and I'm going to give you a few tips as to how you can fire on all cylinders. So when we were at school, remember, if you wanted to ask your teacher for help, we would do this. And hopefully your teacher would come and help you. At the end of this hand is five fingers. And so I'm going to let us look to see which areas need attention. So you can either hold your hand up or you can keep your hand on your lap, or you can keep your hand wherever you want, because maybe you don't want everybody to know how many cylinders you're firing on. I don't mind, okay? But you must close your fist, and as I ask the question, open a finger if it's yes. So I'm going to go through these quickly. Is your sleep patterns bad, broken, or, are not, or you are not getting enough sleep? 
Are you often stressed, anxious, feeling overwhelmed at times, prone to panic attacks? What's taking up most of the space in your head right now? Are your thoughts more negative, toxic, critical, expecting the worst, feeling like you're not good enough in some areas? Is your behavior more reactive than responsive? Is it irritable, impatient, frustrated, easily triggered, and even angered? And number five, do you have regrets? Do you dislike yourself? and your life at times. So you're gonna decide. So I just wanna say if any of your fingers are up, listen to what I have to say. Because we can start living our life. And you know what, starting to love your life is not because you had great parents, great husband, great opportunities. It's got nothing to do with that. I wanna tell you a secret to loving your life. We accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, but then to have and love our lives, we have to. It's all about you and your choices. You choose. It's about us making those choices. We have to own the responsibility for our mental and emotional health. You know, ladies, just think of it. Peter, and I can't stop there because I'm going to go quickly, but Peter had an encounter with Jesus, which changed his life at that encounter, which then he had to work on areas in his life to continue and follow and take action and do what the Lord wanted. And ladies, you know what? Over the years, I've seen many people have amazing encounters with God, the end. I said the end. They have the encounter They tell you they've had it, and it's the end. They never do anything for themselves. They never work on themselves. And that's what you have to do. That's what I have to do. Jesus has done everything that he's going to do. My choice, my actions, God's power within me allows me to have a happy and healthy life and to be mentally and emotionally stable that we can cope with life. You know, ladies, trauma, pain, disappointment comes in many forms, for all of us, and we can either choose to live in it or we can live through it. And by living through it means you take ownership of your mental health, of your emotional health, and I think that's good news for all of us. We need to just look, and I want us to identify these areas as you have on your fingers, and so let's just look at some tips. I want to also just comment on this. I have not got this 100%. I'm working on my journey. And so that's the amazing thing about God. We never stop working on ourselves. So is your sleep patterns broken, bad, or are you not getting enough sleep? The first thing you need to do is get yourself into a routine. Start setting an alarm on your phone to wake you, to tell you it's time to go to bed and it's time to go to sleep. The body is amazing. It learns patterns. So you need to do it. God's not going to do that for you. You see how what I'm trying to say when I say we can have encounters with God, but we've also got to put in some work. Avoid TV, um, media, coffee, alcohol. Not saying I'm against alcohol, but I just want you to know alcohol actually doesn't make, help you sleep. Um, avoid eating too late. There are natural tablets on the market that people can take. Um, but if your sleep persists and you are exhausted, I want to motivate you and encourage you to see a doctor because this does cause a multitude of emotions to rise up. You just don't cope with life. And these are the little things that you can do as an individual. Are you stressed, anxious, feeling overwhelmed at times and prone to panic attacks. I want you, this is something you can do. God's not going to do it for you. Go and make a list of all the things that stress you out in your life. And then cross off all the things that you cannot control. Because half, and in fact, more than half of our stress is because we're trying to control situations and everybody else. You can't control the traffic, the taxis, the long queues. You can't control other people's behavior. You can't control what people do 
but you can control yourself. And this is going to lower your anxiety, lower your stress when you let go and let God. Um, you can only control your own life. You cannot control anyone else's. When anxiety or stress or panic attacks show up, I want you to tell yourself and create a habit by saying, let me just step back. Let me, excuse me, let me step back. Let me pause. Let me move myself away from the situation. Because if you stay there, it's going to escalate that emotion that you're feeling. Take some deep breaths. Count in on five, count out, uh, in on five, out on eight. Sorry, yes, that's it. And hold your breath, then count out. You're calming the mind. You're calming your body down. Ladies, this is what you can do, okay? God's done everything else for us. Um, it says, keep, also keep a daily record of the stresses in your life. And then at the end of the week, go and have a look and say, okay, I've been stressed about these things and I must stop it because it's not going to help me. Every, um, so sorry, then we're going to look at number three, what's taking up most of your head space? Where are your thoughts negative, toxic, critical, and expecting the worst? The first thing is I want to tell you right now that every thought is not true. Tap your neighbor and say, every thought is not true. Why do we believe every thought we have is true and then we want to act on it? Don't hold onto your thoughts as if your life depends on it. We need to separate the truth from lies and perception. And immediately that you do that, it just calms us down. Record again your thoughts daily and then remove them and replace them with something positive. Listen, man, God's not going to come and take that thought out. You've got to do something with it. You've got to recognize what it is. You know that scripture in Proverbs 23 verse 7, it says, For as a man thinks within himself, so is he. So if you are thinking about all these negative things, if you are allowing yourself and these thoughts to go around your brain and take up space, it's going to impact you as an individual. God can't change your thoughts. That's your job to change your thoughts, Okay. And I just want to say this very quickly. My husband rode the Freedom Challenge, and for those of you that know it, it's 2,150 kilometers on a bicycle from Maritzburg to, to Cape Town. And so every day I would phone him, and I would say, how are you doing? And he, some days he'd say, I'm tired. Some days he was whatever. But then I would say, how's your thoughts? And he'd say, they're fine. And I knew that he would get to the end of the race because it didn't matter what his body told him, his head was in the right space. Ladies, we have to get our head in the right place and the right space. Very important, okay? Choose, we're talking about our thoughts. Choose who you spend time with. They will impact you. Validate yourself. Don't wait for other people to validate you. Why on earth are we waiting for other people to do it? Tell yourself how good you are. Tell yourself that you're amazing. Tell yourself what God can do through you. The next one, is your behavior more reactive than responsive? Okay, is it irritable, impatient, easily triggered or angered? Ladies, what we need to do is change our perception. The minute you are triggered, the minute you are angry, look Inward, not outward. Why do we always think when we upset and angry it's somebody else's fault? <laughs> and I'm not saying it isn't. I'm not saying that sometimes they aren't wrong. But when you're triggered, look inside because it's about something that's going on inside of you and you need to manage it, okay? Acknowledge your behavior so that you can make a change. Ladies, you will never change anything if you don't own it, and you don't acknowledge it. We have to acknowledge the things that are going on in our own life in order to move forward. Give yourself space between you and the other person to calm down. When you're triggered, don't, um, as I said, they may not be right, but it doesn't mean that you have to fix it immediately. Again, why do we have to fix everything quick? Sometimes you need to just step away and move on and just calm down. You can go back and fix it at a later time. And communicate how you're feeling, but choose the right time. A lot of the things that I spoke to you in, in, in the questions too, you can apply to this as well. 
So the next thing and the last one is, do you have regrets and dislike you and your life at times? I love the scripture. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Jesus said, I didn't say, Joy didn't say, John didn't say, Debbie didn't say, Jesus said. Everybody say, Jesus said. said. Tell the lady next to you, Jesus said. We need to be convinced this is what he said. Now I've got to find it. Oh, there we are. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Can you see how the Lord knew that there was emotional, there was mental, there was spiritual? He knew it. And that's why he said, we've got to love the Lord with all those areas of our lives, okay? This is the greatest commandment. The second is equally important equally important to love the Lord. It's also equally important to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So I can take from this, what insight do we have from God's word is that I need to love him, I need to love my neighbor, but I also need to love myself, okay? I want you to tell your neighbor, I'm loving me a little bit more each moment. Yes. I want to hear that. Ladies, you need to give yourself permission to love your life. Some of you have not given yourself permission to actually love life. You've you've thought that you're the victim, and I'm not saying there hasn't been pain, and I'm not saying there hasn't been things you've gone through, but you can either stay there or you can move on, and it's time to move on. It's time to keep walking. It's time to go forward, girls, because that's what God has for each and every one of us, okay? And this is something that is vitally important. I've got a few minutes to share on this. And I want you to know that you can start loving yourself by doing self-care. Self-care. Take time to do the things that you like doing. Now, I understand we're all in different seasons of our lives. So just make some adjustment, girls. You're very clever. You'll figure it out. I know you will. But just make sure that you on the calendar. Make sure you in your diary daily, okay? Choose happiness. Not everything needs a fight. Girls, did you hear that? Not everything needs a fight. The older I am getting and the longer I've been married, 45 years, and I want to tell you now, I take no fights, no fights. <laughs> I can say, yes, honey, I can be upset, and I can say, yes, honey, and walk away. doesn't matter, because in two minutes' time, it's going to look like nothing, or you take up boxing. <laughs> That's a good one. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Get off social media, brain overload. Be present with yourself. I said, be present with yourself. Because you can't change and see what's going on if you're not present with yourself. Okay? Stay connected to those that fill your tank. Oh, ladies, this is important. Adjust your diet. God does not remove calories. I'm sorry to tell you that bad news, but He does not remove calories. We have to do it. Food affects your moods, your energy levels. Exercise, even if it's a walk. Stop complaining and be grateful. Be the best version of you. And ladies, put in boundaries. And ladies, in closing, I want to say this. You know, when you get travel and you get on an airplane, the first thing that they tell you is that when or if this plane's going down, and I know when I'm on it, it's never going to go down, so I just don't listen, but this is what they do tell me is that first, grab your mask, put it on, and then you help your neighbor. And ladies, what we've done is we are just helping and helping, and as we're helping everybody else, we're just going down and down and down. See, that's why God had a plan. He knows how important we are to him. You can fire on all cylinders if we consider all areas of our lives. I want to put this challenge out to you today, ladies, and I want to say, I want you to do something that you've always wanted to do, or maybe you did and you stopped. I want to challenge you to go and love your life. Live life to its fullest, because it only happens once. I love you girls. 
I'm coming around to look at all those beautiful things later. And thank you so much for having me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Charmaine.